Hi, okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to rig up your model and also to create the correct uh, rotational points on each um, action point or joint that you might end up, uh, where you might end up moving your uh, creature. So to do this, the first thing I want to do is I want to get my anchor point set up right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one at a time. I'm going to turn the eyeball off all my parts except for the one that I'm working on. So I'm just turning the eye off on each of these. And now the only thing showing is my skull. So if I click on skull, you can see the anchor points down here. If I want to rotate the head from side to side, the anchor point will need to be about right here where the chin is. So I'm going to go ahead and just go in. I'm going to click on this little arrow next to my skull layer here. Click transform in the arrow and go to anchor point. And I want to move this anchor point up to the chin here. So I'm just going to use these sliders down here to bring this skull down to about there. Then I'm going to bring this over to about right there. So when I rotate the skull now, the anchor point is in the right place. Okay, Control Z will undo it. And so that one's done. I don't have to key I don't have to click this or anything. I'm just going to leave that there and that should stay there. So next I'll turn on my torso, the eyeball on my torso so I can line this up back where it needs to be. About right there, okay? So now that I'm now I'll go to the torso and you can see that the anchor point is down and to the left. I want to rotate the torso right at the end here where it joins the pelvis. So now I'm going to open this up, go to transform, and again change my anchor point to just at the very tip of the torso. Right about there, okay? Now I can bring this back up to where the skull is. So about there, and then when I rotate this, you can see that it would rotate on the right spot. Okay, Control Z, we'll line it up again. All right, so that one's done. Next, I'll go to my left bicep, open that up, turn the eyeball on. And again, notice that the anchor point is over here. When I click left bicep, it goes down here. So here's our left bicep anchor. We need to get this anchor to be right here where the shoulder and the ball here meet. So I'm going to go ahead and click transform, go to anchor point of course, bring this down and then bring it over and well a little let's bring it back a little bit about right there. So I'm going to bring this now back up here I'm just clicking the anchor point now, the arrows, to reposition where it needs to go. Maybe about right there. And then again, when I rotate this, it's the rotation point's in the right spot. Okay? All right, so that's done. So next we're going to turn on the left forearm and do the same thing. So now you want to make sure you're on the left forearm layer. Make sure you click it and it turns blue. Same thing here. We're going to open this up. Go to transform. Change our anchor point. So we're going to bring this over and down, right? So probably about there. Maybe over just a little bit. Perfect. Okay. Now I'll bring this back up to where it needs to go. Check my rotation here. Perfect. All right. So that one's done. Now we're going to turn on our right bicep. Click on the layer. Turn on the eyeball. Open this up. Go to transform and anchor point. Okay, so we're gonna, well, let's bring this down first, maybe. Here we go. 
and then we'll just bring it over perfect maybe uh, this way a little bit right there right on the money so now we can bring this over and up we need to move it over a little hair maybe about right there Damn. Perfect. And then we can check our rotation here. Looking good. Okay. Go to right forearm next. It's very tedious. Um, but, you know, this is what needs to be done. Oh, I forgot to turn the eyeball on. Make sure you turn that on. And let's go ahead and get this point down. Looks pretty good. Bring this over and up. About right there. So far so good. Everything seems to be working nicely as far as the rotation. Okay, next step, pelvis. Turn the eyeball on. Uh, on this one, I'm not too concerned about the rotation point, but I do want to change it maybe to the bottom here in the center. So it, just in case, um, I don't think I'll want to move it, but. So there we can get the center and then maybe down below. About right there, that would probably be good. Move this guy over a little bit, maybe up. And again, when you rotate it, that looks about right as far as where I want it to rotate. So far, so good. Okay. So once that's done, again, then you go to the next one here, which will be left thigh. So we're going to turn the eyeball on that, open up our transform. And if you're running out of room on your screen, there's a little slider to the right of your timeline. And with left thigh now, go ahead and change the anchor point. Looks like I don't have to move it too much for this. Maybe about right there. Move that over just a hair. Okay. And then when I rotate it, yep, that's looking good. Done. Okay, next would be left calf going to turn that on we're going to open up transform and adjust our anchor point but make sure again that you click on the actual layer so it turns blue okay now you can see the anchor point is way far away from it but that's okay we can do go ahead and change that right now and we're going to go up with it Probably about there. Back down. Line them up there. Okay, and that's pretty good. All right, so now we'll go to right thigh. Just about done here with this part. Again, make sure that it's selected and the eyeball is turned on. Make sure it's blue and then go ahead and change your anchor point here for right thigh. Out there. We're going to bring it over to about, about there. Okay. Bring this over up. That looks pretty good. Rotate it. Okay, good. Control Z if you want to undo that. Done. And last one here, I believe, is the right calf. Okay, again, bring your slider down. Transform. Same thing. Slider down. 
go to anchor point here. Oh, we got to turn the eyeball on. I keep forgetting to do that. And right calf is selected, so we know the anchor point's way up here. We got to get this anchor point to be right here where the knee joint is. So we're going to move the object, and then we're going to go up with it. Out there, and then over just a hair. Perfect. Now we're going to bring this guy back down. Line it up. There we go. Check our rotation. Okay, we're happening. All right, so all the anchor points should be in the right position. And again, to check them, you just select your part and do a quick rotation. If it's looking right, then you're, you know you've done it right. Okay, all right. So that takes care of our uh, anchor points in the right spot, our pivot points. So the, the next step you have to do before you start keyframing, and this will be the last step that you'll have to do, is to rig this up so it's all linked together, okay? And the logic is this. You start from the top and move toward the center, or you start from the outside, such as the forearm and the hand, and move your way into the center. Same thing with the uh, his uh, right hand, or my left hand, I guess, on this side. Start with the hand, you link to the forearm, you link from the forearm to the bicep, bicep to the torso, etc. Uh, so, and also you'd go from the bottom to the center. So from the feet to the uh, calf, to the thigh, to the pelvis, etc. So what I'm going to do in this is link everything. Everything's going to eventually link to the pelvis. The pelvis is going to be my... my uh, central object that everything eventually is linked into. So here's how you do it. I'm going to start with the skull and work my way down to the pelvis, okay? So I'm going to click on skull. And the idea here is, is the skull, if I want to parent, if I want the skull to have a parent, I will link the skull to that parent. So the skull is going to be linked to the torso. The torso will be basically the skull's parent, and I'll show you what that means. So if I go here to skull, I'm going to go over to none here and click this little arrow right next to the word skull here, and I'm going to parent the torso to the skull. So now I'm going to click torso, and so now this skull is parented to the torso. In other words, the torso is the parent. So when I go into the torso, or here's a better way to do it. If I move the torso, watch this. If I click on the torso and I move it, the skull is parented to it, or the skull is the child to the torso. So it'll move with the torso. You see how the skull's moving also with it? That means they're properly linked. So now what I want to do is I want to take the torso and I want to parent the pelvis to the torso, okay? Because the pelvis is what everything's going to link into. Um, so as I go up here to torso, I'm going to click on none again, and I'm going to choose pelvis. Now the pelvis is the parent to the torso. So if I go to the pelvis layer and move that, you should see the torso and the skull follow because they're both parented now to the pelvis. Control Z. All right, so that's how it works. So now, so now that I have the skull parented to the torso, and the torso is parented to the pelvis, I'm going to start with the arms and move my way into the torso. Because remember, the torso is already linked to the pelvis. So we'll go here to our uh, left forearm, which is right here, and we're going to parent that to the left bicep. Okay, so left forearm, I'm going to click none here in the arrow. Find left bicep, done. Okay, and now I'm going to go to left bicep, and I'm going to parent that to the torso. Okay, so now if I click on torso, for example, and I move it, the left arm follows because it's parented to it. If I move the pelvis, everything that's parented to it is going to move with it. You see how that works? Because they're all linked now. 
Same thing, I'm going to go to the right forearm. Remember, you have to start from the outside and move your way in. I'm going to link that to the right bicep. I'm going to go to the right bicep now, and I'm going to link that to the torso. So now, again, when I move the torso, both arms will follow. So you get the idea here. If I move the pelvis, everything that's linked to it will follow. Okay. All right. So last steps here, I'm going to go to the left thigh. And I'm going to link that to the pelvis. I'm gonna, oh, no, I'm not going to do Well, I guess I could do it that way. I'm going to go to the left calf now and link it to the left thigh. I just did it in a different order. But that's how it works. The left calf has to link up to the object next to it, which is the left thigh. Then the left thigh links to the object next to that, which is the pelvis. So again, when I move the pelvis, everything that's linked to it will move. So everything's working fine so far. Now I'm going to go to the right calf. Parent that to the right thigh. Okay, now I'll go to the right thigh and parent that to the pelvis. And notice that the pelvis is not linked to anything because there's nothing more to link to. The pelvis is the last object that everything's eventually linked into. And that's why when you need to move your object, you have to move it by that one part that everything's linked into. Notice how it moves the whole object. What if I tried to move the skeleton and I was on the torso layer, right? It would only move part of it. It would only move whatever's parented to the torso. So you have to, when you want to move your entire model, you have to select the object that everything eventually links into, the central object that's not linked to anything else, or that's not parented to anything else, excuse me. Um, so there you go. Now you have your uh, model rigged up correctly. Your rotation points are in the right spot. And uh, now what you're ready to do is start keyframing your model and making it do something. And most of, well, most of your movements will just be moving the rotational joints. So, for example, I may want to uh, rotate his left bicep or left arm. So then I'm just going to do a rotation keyframe on this point. Maybe have him lift his arm up. And then his left forearm maybe will also lift up. And he'll wave to you. Okay? And you know that it's working because your rotation points are working along the right um, pivot points. And everything seems to be linked correctly. And you're ready to start animating.